Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. And today it's just me doing another one of these nettings, you know, with the tool. I'm gonna get rid of this nonsense because I wanna grow zucchini in here and this will just clutter it up and make it too tight and it won't grow. So I will get rid of that. You know Let me get my gloves on. I don't know what kind of squash plants coming up in here, but it won't matter. The squirrels get in here sometimes and that one has just taken off. The whole plant is full of zucchini and it's so easy to ma maintain and so fast to put up. I mean, the way I'm doing this, you could do this anywhere. You could put up a, like a little freestanding, you could call it a cage or whatever you want to call it. But you could do this absolutely anywhere because you're not putting it into the ground. So if you had a deck with cement, it won't matter because you're putting it into pots and the pots are going to hold the stakes and you're not putting any weight on it. So it's just a matter of holding the stakes where you want them. And then you're going to put the tool around it. And that's what I have to figure out and you make it a little level. This way, I net the whole thing and the plant's got freedom to grow as big as it wants. Now, if you don't have a lot of soil, I put some heavy soil in there and I need to add a little bit more into this one, I see. Um, you could use rocks or sand, but you will need some sort of pot. I won't need this anymore because I'm going to put the pot like I did there on the inside. Now, some of you who have not seen my other videos are probably saying, why don't you just stick the stakes in the ground? Well, that would be the easiest thing to do, but there's no ground here. Right now, all I have here are wood chips. This is blacktop. This was a parking area and the wood chips are breaking down. Gary must have laid about, I don't know, eight or nine inches of wood chips, but they break down and turn into soil. So they compact down not hard they just turn in the soil because you think about it it's all it's all big pieces and what it's doing let me get down here and show you okay oh i just found another stepping stone what it's doing is it's turning basically into soil and by doing that it's compacting down so that's what happens because the big piece is just compressed but I just saw something that I don't want to bury, and Gary must have buried it. And I didn't know he did. So let's get this out. I don't know where it is. There it is. I should have had a shovel. Oh, totally unplanned. Isn't it wonderful? You turn the camera on, and that's the way I do things. And then, yes, I could turn the camera off. I could edit it out. I don't do that. No, here we go. Look at that. The stepping stone I didn't know was there, but I'll stick the pot there instead. That's what I could show you. Look at this. This fine, fine. Now it looks like beautiful soil. The whole thing is full of that, that dust. That's wood chips. And the stepping stone was on top. So your, your earthworms and your microbes and everything broke down. And now I've got all this soil that was wood chips, you know, that just looked like this, what, a year ago he put all this down? So I went from this to this. I don't know if I can show you or if you can see it, but that's the difference in about a year. And I'm hoping you can see that. This is about a year later. This is what it looked like in the beginning. So that's what happens with your wood chips. Wood chips break down into soil. But right now, that's what we're doing. We are going to stop those wonderful rodents. Look at the tree roots from the, it's either from the California pepper or from the pine trees. And I don't want to take the pine trees out. Okay, I may have to add some more soil or do something with that. I'm probably gonna stake it on the top. Oh, I didn't bring enough poles. I can come back later if I need to. Probably do it that way and that way. 
course I didn't bring enough poles. I thought I counted enough poles. We'll start with this and then we'll see. So I got my zip ties. Okay, you've already seen this. If you've seen the other video, where are my zip ties? There we go. That's not the ones I want. I've got some that are really long. I wonder if I put them over here. Of course not. Very strange. I took them out. Okay, now I'm going to have to go get my other zip ties. I had some longer ones. And I will go get another pole now that I'm leaving. Okay, I am back. I wonder if there's any more stepping stones buried. All right, I am back. And I knocked this down. All right, so there's the, I think I've got some longer zip ties. They were a dollar. Had them at the dollar store. They had different sizes. So I thought maybe I will get the longer ones. Look at that. All right, so we're going to put one across there and one across there. This is where the masking tape can be handy too. Let's see if we can do it without the masking tape. So what's new? Well, we went to Walmart and we got sugar. I found out that if you order a lot of items online, they're much cheaper. I thought they were discontinuing it, but he told me they were not. He told me that you save a lot of money online. Now, I don't know if the price is going to stay the same, but we got the sugar for like $8.36 for 25 pounds. 25 pounds. Guess how many pounds I bought. 25 pounds. $8.36 for not just sugar. Pure cane sugar. Now, does it make a difference when you're feeding hummingbirds? You know, truthfully, I, I wanted to see because at first I wasn't sure if it was really cane sugar, but I actually did look it up and it absolutely is. It says it was. Um, according to the hummingbird societies and everything, it doesn't matter. So it doesn't have to be cane. They prefer cane and so do I, only because I know it's non-GMO'd and all that and it's, you know, good sugar. So, Anyways, eight dollars and thirty-six cents for twenty-five pounds. Okay, nobody's guessing. How many pounds do you think I bought? So far, I have bought this week two hundred and seventy-five pounds. And I thought, wow, that's gonna last me a long time. And then I told Gary, oh my gosh, I'm going to go through a bag a week. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get any more. But the guy said the regular price, he did say they did sell it in the store. And this is something I learned today. Is $11 and like 50 cents. So he said you save $3 a bag by ordering it online. See, I'm not going to be able to enter this way. I'm going to enter from the other way. So, I bought a lot of sugar. You know what? I use a lot of sugar, and that was a great price. Now, you can't, if you're feeding hummingbirds, and I don't know how many people are feeding as many as I am, and this is only going to create more hummingbirds, you think, oh, they're just going to be happy. Uh-uh. No, the more you feed them, the more you're going to create. So I have to be aware of that. But if you are feeding as many, you know, that's a good deal. The other thing is at Christmas time, around the holidays, Thanksgiving here in the United States, they start to put a lot of your baking goods, your big, big grocery stores on sale to attract more buyers. Oh, I love my zip ties. My zip ties and my masking tape. Um, and so I have bought the sugar from Ralph's, which is Kroger's. And they put it on sale the first year, a couple years ago, they put it on sale at Thanksgiving, I believe it was, around Thanksgiving time. So they put it on early November, right after, I think, the week of Halloween. And it was a dollar bag, and that's four pounds. That's even a better price. Unlimited. You can buy all you want. 
Now another store, Albertsons I believe, I could be wrong on that, I believe it was Albertsons. They put it on sale too, but they had a limit. I think it was like one bag. So my mom called me, look, you can get sugar for a dollar a bag. I said, mom, it's one bag, it lasts me a day. So um, I went ahead and got it at Ralph's. The first time I bought a hundred bags, I thought that was going to last a long time. It did, it lasted me almost a year. And then I ran out, and then last year, I think I'll move that one out a little bit. Where's my gloves? Last year, they put it on sale instead of for Thanksgiving, and I thought they weren't going to do it. They changed it, and they put it on sale closer to the Christmas holiday, which is fine. I still bought it, but I started getting worried. Like, uh-oh. So I went and bought some from some other stores that had it on sale for a lot more money. But I still went and bought them, and then Ralph's put them on sale, and by then I had a whole bunch. So I still bought a lot, but I didn't buy a hundred bags. And that's the thing. Will the, and then again, that one is sugar beet or beet sugar, and I prefer the other one more. I want to be able to still go back here. So even though they're both okay, I personally prefer cane. So my big dilemma is: Am I going to order some more? Because as I've been buying them from the local stores around me, they're all out. And though they say put it on a wish list or something and they'll let you know. I could do this for more stability, a cross beam, but then I'm going to have to bend when I go in there. I think I will hold off. I think we're good. And we'll just go with that and see how that goes. And even for more stability, if I wanted to, I could put another couple planters with more stakes and just stake it up that way. I don't have any extra so I'm not going to bother right now. But I've got some sort of squash growing and it might be zucchini. And then I've got mint and something else coming up in here. Some sort of squash. I am tempted to pull the mint. And you know what? I might. Because the mint is going to take over. You know what? I might just leave it. Because I'm going to plant more squash. I won't eat this basket either. Once this is all done, I don't need any of this. I can put the baskets over other things, which will be good. Okay. Now, this is so quick. If I would have had everything out the way I wanted it, it would have been quicker. Which way do I want to come in? This way. That would be the way to do it. I think I don't need my gloves now. Let me take my gloves out. So if I do it this way, I'm gonna do it this way. So let's, this is, I get, I get, uh, what is it? It's 40 yards and it's 54 inches wide. So this will go to the ground. Probably will need to be cut when I get to the other side. And then once I have it all done, I can put stepping stones or something. Let me just... And what else did I do? I need to do a nature walk next week. Got a lot of stuff going on next week, but I need to do a nature walk. Okay, so now that this is not on the cardboard bolt, it's all twisted. And now it's going to take me longer than I thought. Great, great, great. What else is going on? So we have the hummingbird on the side of the house. She hatched her babies. I can see two babies. So that's cute. So now she's raising babies in June, which they do do sometimes. And there's been house benches with babies all, yeah, this is gonna be forever. Maybe I shouldn't talk and speed it up because I twisted it when I bundled it away and took it off the cardboard. And I did the other one. I just want, want to make sure that I have more than enough. Zip tie this. I'll put it on the existing piece there. It's going to be really good. And what's cool is you just put the zip tie right through the tool. Then you can come back afterwards when you're all done. You can fix it all up. Okay. I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to speed this up for you. Because this is ridiculous. You've seen me do this before and you probably don't want to see it again. I'm telling you this has worked so well. I, I cannot believe it. Oh, it's windy again. 
Okay, let's just get this around. Let's see if I can untwist this. Next time when you do it, leave it on the board if you get it with, on the board. I'll buy a whole bowl. I think it fell off and I thought, oh, I'll just put it away. And this will go to the ground. I'll do it here like this. It better go to the ground. And I want it, I want the pots on the inside. So I can plant in those pots. They're not just they're not just gonna hold this up. They're gonna have a purpose. Keep in mind that sometimes it's better that you do what I say, not as I do. Now, I think it's harder than they should be. This thing twisted up like a twisted button. I can go this way. It's good I don't need to go through here, but if I have to, I can. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm not sure I did this right. If I didn't, I'm going to take the whole thing apart. Yeah, I did. Okay, so we got our sugar from Walmart. The wren is raising its baby, and it's getting bigger and bigger. They raised one baby. They had six eggs, and they raised one baby. So either, you probably can't even see me, either they weren't healthy enough to get all of them hatched, or we have had very cold weather. You've heard me say this over and over. People don't want to hear it. But the thing is, it also hurts wildlife. So you've got a tiny, tiny little bird trying to sit on six eggs that has to be kept at 99.5 degrees roughly. And when it is at night in the 40s, when it should be 58 degrees, I, I really don't see how they can physically sit on those eggs and keep them warm enough. And I think that might have been a bigger problem, the temperature. So there might have been smaller. Now, hummingbirds, they have a very tight, tight little nest. And that is different. They're only laying, they're only laying two eggs. And the nest is very tiny, so it will hold the heat better. Even though she's tiny, it will still hold the heat better. And that's all they have are two eggs. And she's sitting really tight, and it's a tight little cup. So she would be able to keep those eggs warmer, even in very cold weather. I've seen them do it in the winter, out my kitchen window. And she, they'd be able to keep the eggs warm because it's in a cup. You know, a hummingbird's nest is, looks like a little tiny cup, and she's got her eggs in there. And she can sit on there and keep them warm because the eggs are in like a little tiny room. <laughs> Where the wren, it's different. You're using a big box and they're a tiny bird and she's trying to warm something up. Oh wow! I don't know why I need to untwist the whole thing. I'm going to cut it anyway. There, tr she's trying to keep these things at close to 100 degrees. It just isn't going to happen. I mean, you would think in nature it does, but they're so tiny. I think it could have been the weather as well. She may have decided, because remember, animals work with nature, not by, by feelings as much, but more on necessity and what's important and what's, what's going to work and what isn't going to work, because she'd rather raise something than nothing. They may have known right off the bat that they're not going to have, let me get my stuff out. They're not going to have enough food to raise because of the, you know, less insects around with the cold weather. They may have known they cannot raise more than one baby. 
So it is possible that they hatched only one or two babies and then just gave up on the rest of the eggs. And that happens too in the wild. She could have known this, this isn't going to work. And if she tried to raise them, she knew that it wasn't going to work. So I think that could have been another thing. You know, you don't know. You don't know what went through their little minds. I don't know what happened when it got close to... Okay, we're going to cut it right here. Oh, I didn't cut too much. Um, and then I can untwist this later. Yeah, you don't know what went through their mind, but they know they're very smart. They're going to raise one instead of nothing. Will they try again when the weather gets warmer? So they say, she might, she might not. So we'll see. They don't generally use the same nest I heard right away. So once this baby is weaned and on its own, they may not come back. So hopefully they'll find a different nest that will work better for them. Look at that, and that's it. I'm basically done. Isn't that amazing? That is it. Now I just have to set it up a little better. I can put some stepping stones, whatever I want. This is my door, which I cut way too big. But that's all right. I can either leave it or trim it. I might trim it. See, I can go back now and just set it up a little better. But this is it. I can just unclip it with clothespins, come in here, serve, service what I want. I'm going to grow plants in this pot that's holding it, but I think I still will put something right here, a little bit more stability. If I don't want it, I'll take it off. It's just been so great. Now, Gary's telling me the deer will tear this off. I have not tried it. I don't know. I don't, you know, I have had deer in the front yard once and they ate my broccoli. Would they come back here and try to tear this off? I don't know. They're not really in the squash. So we'll have to see. Depends on the deer. You know, it only takes one. It only takes one of them to decide, oh, this is no big deal. I can rip this off. But I have had a tool fence over by the bricks, the cement blocks, and you've seen that. That's been up since, well, it's been a good two, three months now. Yeah, let's look at that. And that is going strong. I would plant in there and the stinking rabbits would come and just chew. Rabbits and the squirrels were chewing down all my walking onions. Not anymore. They're not touching it. I've got so many walking onions coming up there. I've even got my purple tree colors right now in a pot in there. It's well protected. So that's, I mean, that's how easy it is. I'm done. It literally, if, if I didn't have my tool all twisted, I could have had this done in probably five minutes, 10 minutes. I can cut these off when I get around. Oh, I never cut those off. I can cut them off. I just, ah, oh. I went to the store and I forgot to buy clothespins. I have a few, I'll have to go look. I think I have some extra there. That's what I need, clothespins. You just clothespin it shut. It's to the ground. I've talked about this over and over. The rabbits will come up to it. Oh, it's the weekend. And the kids are out of school and have dirt bikes and stuff. Um, I forgot what I was saying. But anyways... The rabbits will come up to this and they think it's a trap and they don't want to chew on it. And this is just fantastic. I love my tool. It has changed my way of gardening. Like I said, with this, you can use the pot method on a cement patio because if you wanted to put stakes, if you had tomatoes and the tomatoes were getting bigger and bigger and you have them in a big pot, you can take some more small flower pots Put them around, put stakes, and you can make the, big, the thing bigger and bushier and bushier. You can make a trellis out of it. It works so great. I can't get over it. I'm done. I'm done. So if you need sugar, go check it out at Walmart. If you're feeding a lot of hummingbirds, I am. This has been really good. And like I said, with that amount of sugar, the more sugar water I put out, the more you put out, the bigger your hummingbird colony will get. It gets bigger. You're not just feeding the hummingbirds you've got now, you're feeding the babies. And the babies go, wow, well, we're not going to leave and migrate anywhere else. We got all the food we want here. We got insects and we've got, you know, uh, nectar and pollen from all the different 
flowers in the garden, they don't leave. So this is what's created a wonderful thing here. Okay, so I've talked your ear off on nothing. But I'm waiting for zucchini, and now I'm going to keep tooling all over my yard. I've got one over there with tomatoes. It, the plants came up from volunteers. That means those are seeds that fell in there from a tomato, and they came up. I didn't plant them, so I've got that tooled. I've got, of course, the zucchini that's full of zucchini now over here. I've got my cucumber over there with tool around it. And then I've got another cucumber that I didn't tool. And something came and chomped them all down. So now there's tool after the fact. I've got Gary going down and tooling everything. And now he's got pepinos everywhere because the all the critters will eat all this stuff off if they get around to it. And if the dogs don't chase them off and the dogs can't be everywhere. So the tool has worked. I, I, I'm telling you, it's worth a try. I get this stuff on eBay. Like I said, they have their dirt bikes. Um, I get this stuff on eBay. It's 54, 54 inches wide. That's why it's so long. 54 inches wide by 40 yards for $10. And if you do have an eBay account, Keep an eye out because they have eBay bucks. Everybody should sign up for what's called eBay bucks. It's free. You just, on the side, when you go in, you'll see something that says eBay bucks. Click on it. If you're already signed up, then it will say what you've got in there or you don't have in there. And if you're not signed up, it'll ask you if you want to. It doesn't cost anything. You have nothing to lose. Whatever you buy, you get a 1%. They used to do two. They changed it to one. But periodically, they have these sales, I guess you could call it, where they come on and say, oh, we're, we're going to give you 10% back if you buy something. Sometimes there's a limit, like you have to, or you're, an amount you have to spend. They'll say you have to spend $25 or more. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't matter. You can spend a dollar, you can spend $25, and they'll give you 10% back in eBay bucks. Sometimes it's eight. And then every three months, three or four months, they give you the money back. So that's going to be, that's really nice. So I, that's when I usually buy the tool is when they have that. I've noticed that my deck, and I'm going to have to do a garden tour on that, the deck is exploding with food and things are growing more there than they are in some parts of the garden. And the only thing we can figure is it might be warmer. So again, it's got another microclimate. Everything's a microclimate. Here's a microclimate because it had a little extra shape, which may not be good right now with the cool weather, but as soon as it gets hot in the summer, the squash love it because they get the morning sun and then they get a little bit of afternoon sun and they just go nuts here and I usually get squash here zucchini about this big so that's why I want to get this set up and I'm going to get more plants in here I might set up another one there I'm going to do the rest in the yard and see how this works but that's it so I chewed your ear off on nothing if you need sugar, check online. I Now I have found out that with Walmart, they reduce the prices if you will buy it online. I knew that Sam's Club does. I buy a few things from Sam's Club once in a while, and they knock off like 50 cents or a dollar if you buy it online. But with the sugar, that was a really good buy for cane sugar. And it looks like it's a generic company, but I actually looked into it, and the company is the same one that does CNH sugar, Domino sugar and a lot of other really big brands. That's why it's pure cane sugar. So that was really good and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. And like I said, I bought 275 pounds. And all I'm doing is building the numbers of hummingbirds up and up and up. I need my neighbors to start putting more feeders out. I love the hummingbirds. I, I absolutely love them. Have a great day. I'm so excited with this. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. This is so cool. I know the mic went off and I'm behind the camera right now, but I wanted to show you this. I have this sitting in my garden this whole time. Look at this. See if you can see that. See what's in there? You got some earthworms in here. See what they've done? Let me get in front of the camera so I can talk to you and tell you what this is. Yeah, it's like usual, my camera went off. So sorry about that. I didn't know I talked that long. This is not a zucchini, but it's a hybrid. And these grow like weeds in my garden because they were born and raised here. They're used to the climate 
and they just do really good and even though I really wanted to grow zucchini because of our weather I mean that zucchini is doing good I'm gonna plant some hybrids in here they taste the same they're sometimes a little more orange this one actually made it outside just sitting in a flower pot it's starting to break down as you saw it's getting a little moldy there's some earthworms in there they're feeding on the matter that's breaking down but this is this is nature I mean you could do this if you had some vegetables that you weren't going to plant right away and you want to have them for next year if you didn't want to save the seeds you know the regular way I've done this so many times I'll just take a fruit and sit it in anywhere just off to the side normally it would drop off or you would leave it on the plant it would go through the winter and then it would break down like now the earthworms would get into it and it would start to break down the seeds would kind of go into the ground with the rain and the weather and the strongest would survive sometimes too many survive so I'm going to plant this in here let me grab my shovel shovel and the way I do this is I might break it into pieces but I'm not taking the seeds out I put a pot in here I just went and found an extra pot and this is just soil I have sitting around the yard in pots because it was moving it around and like I said I water the soil even if there's nothing in it to keep it alive and all these buckets here behind me and around the yard when I went to tip them were full of earthworms even though there's no plants or anything in them so I'm going to break this in pieces and put it in here and I'm going to let the strongest survive and we'll see what happens I might just plant the whole thing and I might do it in a couple places because there's so many here and I'm not really set up anywhere else yet so I would just tear it in the pieces I might put it in this pot there is a squash there but I don't know how that squash is going to make it I moved it out of the mint and I might put another one on the other side because it's going to get a lot of food from here I can compost right in place in here I know there's way too many if you want you can pull out some of the extra seeds and just stick them anywhere this is probably why I have squash coming up that I don't know what it is but the matter that it was sitting in you know the the fruit the vegetable itself that kept it going all winter uh, maybe I'll stick another one over here okay now I'll just water this in and whatever makes it makes it I still have the other half sitting in the pot where I had it sitting I cut it in half and there were earthworms and everything but that's it you know and the squash that you save the seeds a lot of stuff anything you save out of your garden is sometimes better than the stuff you can buy because it grew up in your climate and your weather and if it was successful generally the seeds will be successful again sometimes you try new types of plants and they just you know don't do well well when you have them come out of your garden and they produced you know that they're going to produce again well I should have set one over there but like I said I've I've got more and the other thing is once they come up sometimes you can move them I just moved a few over there and I've been moving things around the ones that are coming up that grew in the, in the, my yard the squash you can move them so I'll see what happens here like I said I've, I'll bring the camera over so you can see better there's a pot now inside the tub I did not set this up to grow that squash I'm not sure what squash is in there but I did not set it up so it came up on its own probably some old seed that was left in there or something dropped in there and it's definitely a squash I'm just not 100% sure if it's zucchini I would have built the soil up a little bit more but because I didn't that's why I figured I'll put a pot next to it and it will feed off of that with all the earthworms then of course it's going to feed the rest of the swimming pool this tool should protect it and I should get something out of this pretty good and not have to worry about anything except for the birds I'm not trying to block out birds and I'm not trying to block out bees because that you want you want the pollinators even ants when they're not marching or they're not doing terrible things in your garden they're pollinating they are pollinating my squash I saw the ants in there they'll go from flower to flower they're collecting things from the flower too and they're pollinating so we'll see how this goes it looks a little sad right now but you know I like I said I just 
threw it together. The main thing is I now can think about other stuff I can plant in there. I don't have to worry about rats. I don't have to worry about rabbits. I don't have to worry about squirrels. It's so silly, isn't it? You would think, well, I found one clothespin somewhere and I'm not sure where it went. Okay, I'll have to find it again. It's just so silly that this is so simple and it scares them. It's good enough for me. <laughs> so I'm done for today. I'll just sit this here. I'm going to probably put something down here for now to anchor it. I did put a pole. I'll put the other video on how I did that one, the one on the other side, completely. Um, by detail, I'll put that video, a link to it. Should be at the end. And that's got poles on the bottom for weight. But you, can, you don't have to put a pole. You can put a pole. You can put a stick. You kind of just roll it in the tool and put your zip ties there. You could use string, but it, you would have to use a needle and thread or, or an, some sort of large needle with some sort of yarn or something. If you didn't have any zip ties, you could do it that way too. If you had an embroidery needle, you know, one of those large needles, you could do the same thing if you didn't want to use zip ties. It'll work. Sometimes I put masking tape over the zip ties so the sun won't break it down. I can always keep an eye on it and put another zip tie in there too. But I put a stepping stone, some flower pots, and when I'm not coming in here, I probably will just sit, as I bring this across, just set it down on top of the tool so it doesn't blow around too much. Because here I want to make sure I can open this up, get in here, and close it up in a matter of seconds. If it takes me too long or it takes somebody too long, they don't want to bother. So the whole thing is, it's got to be easy, it's got to be fast. You get in there and when I'm watering, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to go in there. So I can just water from the top. So now, have a great day. And don't forget to get your hands dirty and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Cool. I have zucchini. I gotta make bread this week. Bread. Sounds so good. It's cake. Give me a break.